So the first film I saw was a short story about love. It was one of the Decalogue uh, stories, but it was made into a feature film, a long feature film. And I really loved it. And it was very special for me to see a film from Poland. The idea of one day meeting this director from Poland would have never occurred to me. You know, it really looked like that was another world and another kind of uh, culture. And I was very impressed. And uh, it was great that I saw this film because later on, when I was offered to come and meet Krzysztof Kislowski, it was a big adventure for me because I was already, you know, in United States doing a film. I had to cross Atlantic to just have a meeting with him. And uh, thank God I had seen one of his films and I really loved it. So I, I decided to make the trip to meet him. You know, in, he saw Goodbye Children uh, from Wimal and I had a little part in it. But uh, he noticed me in this part and also the casting director knew me and they asked me if I would come over to make a test. But for me, uh, you know, I was in, uh, in America at the time, so I had to just come over to Paris to meet him. And I did this. We had a, a long um, session, of work, working session, where we were in a studio with a set the DP, the sound, I had to learn all the lines of the scenes of Double Life of Veronique. And also I had to make some improv um, improvisations for him. And the work was really interesting. I've worked a whole afternoon with him and I thought, okay, even if he doesn't take me at the end, it was worthwhile, um, you know, because it was a very interesting moment. It was not just a test where I had to show something. It was really a working process. And then I met him another time two weeks later, and he said, okay, I saw the test, I know what you can do, now I want to work on what you, uh, what is difficult for you to do, so I can see how it is to work with you. So he asked me to, when would I be angry, when would I be, uh, he, he asked me many things, um, and to see how I would be easy to work or not, and I think it was a difficult choice for him to do. And, you know, finally, I got the part and I'm glad I did. <laughs> yeah. After the double life of Veronique, he told me, ah, it would be nice to work again together. And I said, yeah, yeah of course, you know. And, but we didn't discuss what exactly. Or... Then he had this idea of making a trilogy. And <clears throat> one day, when he had the three treatments. He told me, yeah, I'm going to do three treatment, treatments and you're going to be in the last one, fraternity, brotherhood, red. <clears throat> and so then I read the first treatment that were, it was 60 pages. And uh, I liked it, but uh, yeah, for the part, he asked me, what was the name you liked? <clears throat> what was the, the, your favorite name when you were a child? And I said, Valentine. <clears throat> and he said, ah, so she's going to be uh, named Valentine. Because he said, it's a character that is about the childhood, in a way. So I want, uh, so he wanted this kind of name that you like when you're a child. And when you're an adult, it's not the kind of name, you know, you still, but when you're a child. When he wrote the Decalogue, he was planning to give some of the Decalogues to other directors and he would only do part of it. But then he ended doing all of them, so we just don't know. What is sure is that he r directed a great amount of films during his life, and that was short. And uh, when we think that he made these 10 films in one year and a half, and you think of the Decalogue, you think that uh, maybe he, he worked twice as much, he, he went the trilogy, he did it also at once, he would edit blue as he was, you know, filming red. And he said that uh, it was something he liked to do because then he was, he liked to, to be working on red and editing blue at night. A lot of directors wouldn't like that or people, you know, I don't know if I would like to have my mind split like that. But he said that for him, it would keep his ideas clear and it was stimulating. But he was very tired after that because uh, he, he worked so much and I think um, he was feeling like a break. His career started uh, as a documentary filmmaker and he's done many, many documentaries. And he says 
that he said that if he stopped doing documentaries is that because what really interested him finally was filming something very intimate in people and he felt he didn't have the right to film these people when it was their real story and he would rather have actors that were just acting but he wanted to he realized that it was these subtle feelings he wanted to touch these intimate feelings and uh, so he, when I say that he wanted to film intimacy, it's the intimacy within ourselves already. How do we connect with the world? You know, how do we sudden feel, suddenly feel we belong to something because we have, see a coincidence here or because we, we are sweating a bit or because we are uh, hot, you know? Uh, all, these, all these things or big forces driving us, even if they are very subtle. Uh, working together was a very good collaboration. Uh, it's true that he had a very precise idea of what he wanted, but at the same time, you felt quite free in that, uh, you know, in that field. And for Red, uh, we rehearsed with Jean-Louis Trintignant for one weekend before starting the shoot, and we went over the whole scenes we had together. These scenes were really intense. It was the first three, three weeks of that shoot. And he said to me that sometimes he would start a film with the easy stuff and going into the deep uh, you know, plot uh, at the end when he's warmed up. And sometimes he would do the opposite, starting with the warm stuff, the hot stuff, and then going with the easy shots. You know? And he said, I don't know what works best. I can't figure out, you know. <laughs> and so once he was doing this way and the other one the other way. So with Red, we started with the meeting with uh, Jean-Louis Tratignan. And that was very intense. And for three weeks, it was a very uh, um, hard working process for me because uh, I felt that uh, Valentine was always angry, always revolted, always. And it was, uh, it was very demanding. Jean-Louis Trintignant is very clever and he has always a very interesting way to, you know, put things in perspective, changing this, you know, uh, like, uh, for example, someone say, oh, it's, you have to have a great memory to be an actor. He says, no, to be an actor, you have to be able to forget, you know, he always takes the opposite way and he, he, he likes to play these games. He's very clever and he likes to, to provoke things, but in a very subtle and clever way, which makes it very charming and, and he's a very great person to be with. He has a, when he acts, it's never, he would always choose a choice which is not obvious, you know, and he was very happy to work in, in Red and I think he really enjoyed working with Christophe a lot and they enjoyed each other too. Some people ask me actually why these six people survive. Uh, they found it quite outrageous in a way that Krzysztof Kislowski would uh, have that scene. And my interpretation was that they survive because we know them. And in any kind of things, what survives is what we have met and what we have been in contact with. So it's a bit of an allegory. It's not really a reality, right? So these two characters of Red survive, and uh, there is this moment where she turns, uh, and there is this red kind of, I don't know, background, and the, uh, and the, the DP said to Krzysztof Kislowski, oh, when Irene is doing the scene where she's doing the little poster for the Schwingen, why don't we do the same picture, you know? And uh, it, would, it will uh, have a, quite an effect and I think it's a great effect in the film and it's very I love that scene actually when the photographer is saying more sad more sad which is in a way stupid for a swing on an advert right <laughs> and she's like this and she suddenly has to be sad in a big studio with the wind and the artificial light and but it's interesting process anyway and then the cliche that he ch that he's choosing and to be uh, a cliche of her life huh, at the end of the story. So this is a nice story about red, in the, the color red, because it's all based on the color red, of course, that picture.
It's a film that was seen everywhere in the world, it's true. And it's a film I keep receiving letters every day about uh, Double Life or Red. It's really uh, very touching. I've made other films and that people sometimes liked and they sent me letters, but it very quickly disappears when the film's, you know, it's three or four years old. But with Red or Double Life, it looks like there is something else that, that, can, uh, that can stay with people, which is very nice.